Hello there everybody, welcome back to Good Game Have Fun. I'm the Hat Person and here's my review of Skyrim VR for PlayStation VR. So I'm not going to do it in the way that I usually do it, uh, no blue screen effects this time. Uh, this review is going to be mostly just gameplay and my vo voiceover of my opinions and the review and all that stuff. Um, I actually do have a question. What kind of format do you guys like? Do you guys enjoy having the blue screen effects? Do you guys don't care? Is it okay if it's just like me with like gameplay here on the side? Or do you just like whatever? I just want to hear your opinion on this game. Go ahead and tell me in the comments. I just want to know real quick what you guys think about the visual style, the visual format of this uh, review stuff. But anyway, I digress. Let's begin with the review. The short version of this review goes like this. This is a version of Skyrim that I always wanted, but I never thought it was possible. It might as well be a totally different game because playing the whole thing in VR makes a really big difference to me. Even though the graphics don't look the best and the controls do take some time to get used to, seeing a full-fledged open-world game in VR rather than a short experience makes this game a potential killer app for PlayStation VR in general. So there we go, that's a long end of it. If you like Skyrim, you're gonna love it in VR. If there's a game, like a long, complete game that you're looking for that you wanna play in VR, particularly PlayStation VR, this is the one to get. I highly recommend it. Go for it. Now, if you want me to talk in a little bit more detail, the long version of the review goes like this. Back when I was in high school, I remember waiting anxiously for the release of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim on PlayStation 3. I had saved up my allowance to be able to afford it and ask my mother to go pick up the game on a Friday while I was in school, which was holding a pep rally at the time. I came back home exhausted, but all that energy came rushing back after I saw the game in my room. I showered, prepared some food, and proceeded to get lost within Skyrim for that entire weekend and beyond. That immersive feeling and sense of wonder is a fond memory that I think back on from time to time. Mostly because I rarely ever get that feeling anymore. It sounds sad, but hear me out. I never thought I would get that exact same feeling a second time with the same game, but it happened. Skyrim VR has pulled me back into its world through the PlayStation VR headset, even after six years of the game coming out. I'm sure the vast majority of you, especially if you're looking into the VR version of the six-year-old game specifically, know what Skyrim is and what it's about. But just in case, let me just give you a very brief summary on what's going on. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is an open-world RPG by Bethesda, where dragons are terrorizing the people of Skyrim, even though dragons are not really supposed to exist anymore. On top of that, you, the protagonist, discover that you are Dragonborn, which means basically that you have special powers in the form of dragon shouts. You can also absorb a dragon soul whenever you kill one, which gives you more abilities. Knowing this, you can decide to either follow the story or just wander around the world and do whatever you want in typical Bethesda open world game fashion. No matter what you choose, you'll always end up getting distracted by something and discovering new things, so don't even worry about having this be a very short experience because you've beelined the story. No, 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 you're always gonna be distracted by, ooh, what's this? What's that? Ooh, a cave. Ooh, a house. Oh, look at this brand new town. Hey, I found some jobs. Let's go do them real quick. Playing this game will essentially make you time travel forward as you explore many dungeons, caves, towns, and then realize that it's 2 in the morning when last time you checked it was still 5 in the afternoon. This feeling of immersion is exacerbated by virtue of it being in virtual reality. Usually I spend around 15 to 20 minutes or god forbid even an hour playing through a very short VR experience of things that could be much bigger, but Bethesda thankfully did not go that route. Just like Capcom's Resident Evil 7, they go all the way and make the entirety of the game beginning to end fully playable in VR. None of this thing of like, oh, there's a mode in VR, or it's like a little tech demo to just see how people think about it. No, 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 the whole thing is in VR. No half-assing it, just go all the way. Due to this being a large open world title that encourages you to play it for many hours at a time, there's definitely a concern in motion sickness not allowing for that. Fortunately for me, I've almost never had any motion sickness problems with virtual reality games in general, and my time with Skyrim VR was very enjoyable with little to no dizziness. However, it did have a couple moments where I felt like I needed to stop and lay down for a bit. For example, if your gear isn't calibrated well enough, you know, if you don't uh, calibrate your move controllers, the camera, the headset well enough, you might get some menu screens swaying back and forth to the point of nausea. It doesn't happen all the time, and in the middle of the action, you won't even notice it, but I definitely did have times where I got dizzy over it. Another occasion of motion sickness was simply due to wearing the headset for a very long time. Even if you have a stomach of steel like mine, you eventually just tire yourself out and you simply can't continue to play. 
In addition, I always have my headset on pretty tight. Of course, this is not the fault of the game. This is my own damn fault. Where um, I tighten up the headset pretty hard. So playing like that for hours with that headset just tightening up in your skull, <laughs> it'll bring headaches and more uncomfortable feelings your way. My best recommendation for you to play Skyrim VR is to play for around maybe 30 to 45 minutes and then just take a break, maybe like another 10 minutes, and just put it back on again. And make sure that you don't have your headset on too tight. Thanks to the control scheme, you won't really have to move your head all that much, let alone moving it quickly. So I really wouldn't worry about the headset being too loose or having to come off. I think just putting it on and just uh, tightening it up just a little bit is good enough. This leads us to another big question mark in the game, the controls. One of the biggest questions for this game was how they would implement the movement, especially when adding the move controllers into the equation. Now I'm pretty relieved to say that the controls work surprisingly well and I enjoyed how different it felt to play with the move controllers. With your right hand, you can hold a button to move forward and then adjust your direction by pointing in the places that you want to go, similar to an analog stick. You can also point somewhere and teleport, but that's not the optional way to play in my opinion. For turning, you can press the left X and circle buttons to turn a few degrees to the side which will become a lot more useful than you think. Now you do have an option of just smoothly moving left and right, but that gave me a little bit of motion sickness, so I opted for the very like automatic like snapping to the side a certain amount of degrees. That one ended up being a lot more comfortable than the smooth turning, because I can already do that with my head, so it, it, those two ways of movement kind of overlap, and it just feels really weird. No matter where you turn, the HUD will always stay in the same place, so you'll always know where you need to turn to be facing forward, which is pretty useful, especially when I'm in a fight and turns out that I'm actually staring at a wall and I slam my move controller into the wall, I would very much rather know where forward is so that I can turn and have more space to be swinging my sword around. Now speaking of the HUD, you still have the same bars, you know, Magicka bar, health bar, your compass, all of that is still the same, but they will all be slightly below your vision. This is done so you can get truly immersed into the world without those menus getting in the way and constantly in front of you like in a regular screen. I would have liked an option to be able to see them a lot easier. I feel like they're a little bit way too down below. Rather than having to look down all the time, uh, I really wish you could just, you know, actually have it be there or maybe have it fade out a little faster. No idea. I wish there were just more options so that I can see it easier. I mean, you do get used to the default setting after a while. I do know that there's some uh, FOV options that you can uh, play around with. I haven't played around with them yet because, again, I got used to it. But, um, yeah, I, I would like to figure out a way to just be able to look down at those uh, bars a lot easier. I feel like I gotta look just a little bit too far down to be able to see anything. The left and right face buttons on each controller all do different things as well. So it is a bit overwhelming at first, but you'll eventually get the hang of it. Now, if you don't want to get the hang of it, and you don't want to deal with any of that stuff, and you just want to play Skyrim like you always have, well, they do give you the option of playing with a regular DualShock 4 controller, which I found very comfortable and easy to get into. Um, during my first few hours of me playing the game, more often than not, I would find myself playing with the gamepad. However, after playing even more and playing many, many hours with the motion controllers, and then suddenly shifting to a regular controller again, it just didn't feel right. I mean, yeah, it was easier to get into, but not necessarily better. Something felt like it was missing from the experience. Playing with move controllers was much more interactive and interesting. I missed that awesome feeling of throwing spells, swinging my sword, and aiming with a bow with my own hands. When there's something I wanted to pick up, I just naturally stretched my arm out to get it. It just felt normal. It felt good. This, among many other small gestures, makes the difference between playing this game in VR and just playing it regular anywhere else. If you play with the DualShock 4, you aim and select everything with your head movements with a little reticle at the center of your vision. Again, it's something that you'll be able to understand immediately, and it's honestly a pretty good way to play the game if that's how you want to do it, but using motion controllers is so much more natural to me, it makes the VR experience truly shine. Unfortunately, not everything is perfect. The first thing you will immediately notice is that the graphics do not look as good as expected. This version of Skyrim looks like the one from the PS3 launch rather than the most recent special edition. Everything looks fairly blocky, grimy, and old, but it was something I was able to accept after a bit of time. The weird thing is, is that I definitely remember the game looking a lot better on PS3 than I do through the headset. But, on the other hand, I also remember something similar happening with the Japanese game Summer Lesson, in which I thought the game looked blocky, jaggy, and pretty subpar through the headset specifically. Because whenever I look back at the footage on a regular screen, it looked beautiful. It was a difference between night and day. 
I'm pretty sure the exact same thing is happening here with Skyrim VR. Through the headset, looks kind of crappy. On a TV, looks pretty good. Through the headset, you're very immersed, but you do have to get over the data graphics and the typical screen door effect before truly enjoying it. As soon as you get over the fact that this is not going to look like real life, you'll enjoy it a lot more. And lastly, this is a Bethesda game, so you will naturally come across some bugs here and there. It's nothing that is neither game-breaking or unexpected, but they are there, so brace yourself. It is pretty screwed up and crazy that you get to see all of these bugs in virtual reality. It's pretty funny. It's kind of a unique experience to see for yourself. The worst thing that did happen to me, though, was a moment where my stamina was constantly being drained even when I wasn't doing anything. The solution to that was just quitting to the title screen and reloading my save file, but it was still a bit of a bother and it interrupted the great time that I was having at that specific moment. In conclusion, if you liked Skyrim before, you're gonna love it in VR. On the flip side, if you have never played Skyrim before or you're simply looking for a good ass VR game that will give you lots of playtime, now is the best time to get into it. This is especially true when factoring in that this version has all of the previous DLC included. The only reason this review came out as late as it did is simply due to the many late nights I've spent playing this game and not wanting to stop. It has its issues, but it definitely could have been a lot worse. As I said, it could have just been like a 10 minute experience in Skyrim where you explore a house and that's it, but no, they did the entire game. I am astounded at how well it all works in VR and how natural the controls translated to this new form of play. This does a lot to get me excited as to the possibilities of other games following in Skyrim's footsteps. It makes me wonder how Fallout 4 will feel like on the HTC Vibe, or any other game for that matter. It's a great achievement and a wonderful proposal for virtual reality games moving forward. Do not let this game pass you by, it's pretty damn good.